Okay, good evening everyone. It's seven o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and get started with our webinar for tonight. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone joining us from Zoom. And uh, we are recording tonight, so just wanted to let you know that as well. Um, we also are trying something new tonight. We're going to be streaming, live streaming to our Facebook group. So those that are driving or mobile or can't log into the Zoom can join us through Facebook. So it's so exciting. So welcome our Facebook members. I am so happy to be here for another Heart of Homeschooling Parent Education Program webinar. This is my favorite night of the week, of the month, of the year. We hope you feel at home as we embark on this adventure together of homeschooling. We believe homeschooling is a life journey and that it needs to be shared in a community. So it's my hope that you will gather with other homeschooling parents like you or educators like you regularly, whether it's tonight or another night to discuss the relevant topics that we cover each and every month. In addition to our monthly topics, we also have a weekly Tuesday tidbit that I post on Facebook. I'll be posting that later tonight. Um, I was working on these webinar slides today, so I didn't get a chance to post that yet. So we also have um, little habits that I post each week that I love to talk on that Facebook group about as well. I know some of you aren't fit on Facebook, so I do record these so you can watch them on YouTube later on or um, grab them from, um, from the Google Drive. So we have some great information to cover during our time tonight. Um, this webinar will last around 40 to 45 minutes. And some of you might be joining us because you're interested in learning more about this thing called homeschooling. And others might have been homeschooling for a long time and you're here to learn more or to connect with others. Some of you uh, might be in the field of education and you're just not satisfied with how things are going and you wanna know more about what this home education thing in, uh, is all about. Whatever path you're on, please know that everyone is welcome. I want you to feel at home and welcome to this webinar. So if you have any questions during the webinar, please put them in the chat. I'm not sure how many people are gonna be joining live. So just to make sure we um, pay attention to time, if you click on the more button up at the right hand side, it should be on the right hand side of your screen and there should be a drop down with the chat. And if you click on the chat, um, you will be able to put questions in the chat and hopefully there will be some time at the end to answer any questions that you have. If not, don't worry, I will create an FAQ sheet. I already have one and I can add your questions to the FAQ sheet. The current FAQ sheet is housed on our website. So if you're wondering about any of those common questions you might have, you can go to our website and read them there. Okay, someone is saying, oh, Kristen, you're saying you're not seeing it on Facebook. Okay, it says, let's see, just gonna just double check. Hmm. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, I'm gonna click this button here and see if it goes now. First time doing this. Thank you for telling me that, Kristen. Let's see, it's loading. So let's see if that works this time. Are you seeing it now? Hi everyone, hopefully it's going um, streaming through to Facebook now. Yes, there might be a little bit of a delay, so I apologize. This is the first time we're doing a Facebook Live at the same time of a Zoom meeting. Technology, you've got to love it. The funny thing about technology is, though, I live in this little town in Northern California, this is kind of getting off topic, and PG&E has shut down our power for the past five days, so we have been using our hotspot on our phone, which has been really interesting. So I'm learning a lot about technology, to say the least. Um, I started off by just letting everyone know the basics of the webinar itself. If you have any questions, please go ahead and if you're on the Zoom, put it in the chat. Um, if you're on Facebook, go ahead and put it in the comments and I can go answer your questions later. Thank you, Kristen. It looks like we are live and good. Um, this webinar is the second in the series of nine webinars that we do each month where we present a relevant homeschool topic. 
We're going to cover most every foundational topic throughout this year regarding homeschooling and what I like to call the pillars of homeschooling. And if you learn about these nine essential topics and read the two books that we are going through, which of course are optional, um, you will have a rock solid foundation to face anything in your homeschooling journey. This year we're reading through two books. The first one is The Everything Guide to Homeschooling. And it's written by a lady named Sherry Lynn Zimbach, who has lots of experience with homeschooling. Um, and then the second book we're reading through is called How to Homeschool. And it's written by a um, homeschooling mom of 10 children, I believe she has. And both books are very full and rich of different ideas and actual um, statistical data from research that's been done, which we're going to talk a little bit about tonight. Um, and I, I believe both will provide you with a lot of material to help give you a foundation in homeschooling. Um, if you've been with us since the beginning of the school year, you should be in chapter five in the Everything Guide. We're looking at socialization and social skills this week, and that's what the Tuesday tidbit will be on as well. Um, the next slide is gonna show a little bit of a breakdown of what we're gonna be covering this year. So that tonight we're on Learn, the history of education and homeschooling. And then each topic that you see after that, discover, connect, cultivate, and so on, will be covered each month. And this is just um, a slide showing you what um, days and times of the month are live sessions will be. And now we're going to also be on Facebook besides just the Zoom sessions. So you can tune in on any of those days and times. The, um, each of the monthly sessions are shown twice per month. So those have, that have more of a um, more free time in the evening might want to join Tuesday nights. And those that have more free time in the morning might want to join on Thursday mornings. Um, one more little Thing that I want to talk about tonight is that this course is also a college credit option um, through Fresno Pacific University and this course will be open through November 15th if you're still interested I just got an email today from someone who wanted to register for the course you will still have to cover all of the material required but it is a self-paced course so you have until the end of January to complete the material for the two credits um, and if you have any questions regarding that, just let me know. So I wanted to go ahead and get to our topic for tonight, which is titled Learn. Um, but before I do that, I wanted to just introduce myself for those that didn't join the first time last month. My name is Shannon Carpenter, and I'm, I work for Inspire as the Senior Director of Homeschool Community and Development. I have been with Inspire since March of 2016. I'm also a homeschool mom of seven children, and I have three grandchildren. I had a little baby boy grandchild that was just born on October 8th, so it's super exciting for us in, in our family. In fact, he was just visiting with us today. Um, all of my, uh, my two daughters that have children want to also homeschool their children, which is really exciting. I've graduated three daughters from our homeschool and I have four left that I'm homeschooling currently. My heart has always been um, wanting to help and serve the homeschool community. So I feel very, very grateful to be able to um, be a part of this homeschool program that we've created with Inspire. Okay, let's get on to our topic. So we're gonna be looking at a brief history of the education system in America, which is really interesting to me. And we're also gonna be looking at the history of homeschooling and how that kind of wove into the history of education in America. So I wanna start with the clip from the documentary, Class Dismissed. And if you haven't seen this documentary, I highly, recommend it and I highly encourage you to even get a copy and watch it as a family. It's really valuable. So let's go ahead and go to that. The model of going to school to learn is relatively new. Before 1900, most children learned at home and out in the real world. In 1837, the state of Massachusetts formed the first state board of education, 
with Horace Mann as its secretary. Mann believed that everyone was entitled to the same content in education. Turning from a research trip to Germany in 1848, Mann lobbied heavily to have the Prussian model adopted. He quickly set about establishing a statewide system of common schools, staffed by professionally trained teachers. His ideas quickly gained momentum. In May 1852, Massachusetts passed a compulsory attendance law. Mann also believed that school could become a great equalizer in values such as obedience to authority, prompt independence, and organizing time according to bell ringing would help students prepare for future employment in an industrial age. The whole purpose of it is to create an docile factory military workforce. The whole purpose is to subordinate children and get them in that mindset of being subordinated so they grow up to be subordinated adults. The poorest class I've had. Prussian schooling had been out to destroy the imagination. In every public library worth its salt in the United States and in every college library, you will find a collection of essays by a Prussian philosopher, Johann Fichte. Fichte said we have to set up a system of universal force schooling in which we destroy the imagination. Bells, ordered lessons, constant testing, ranking. The entire system is designed to regiment a large group of people and to get them all to do the exact same thing. By 1900, 34 states had compulsory schooling laws. Half the nation's children attended one-room schools. By 1918, every state required students to complete elementary school. The reality is they want children to take their place in society, be cogs, and keep this system going. So you're going to school to take your place. Now the trouble's with your attitude. You don't pay enough attention in class. You don't do enough work outside of it. Okay. So, pretty extreme. I would love to see in the chat, if you're joining us on Zoom, what's one word or one phrase that came to your mind when you saw that little clip from this documentary? Did anything come to mind? Shocked. Yes, it is shocking. That's the second time forced. That's the second time I've watched that particular clip today. And it, it was really just overwhelming to me. Extreme, yes. Regimented behavior, wow. I know to see all of them lined up like that it, it, and all the desks, I mean, all those pictures in your head, it's just really interesting, robotic, yes. Yeah, so it really makes you think about um, just the history of public school and where, we're, where we are today and what the purpose was originally way back when, when before um, they started the just the different school systems, what was going on then? So let's let's take a look at the book that we're going through, the Everything Guide to Homeschooling. In chapter one, I want to go back because I know we're in chapter five this week, but I want to go back to chapter one because it gives a really good brief overview of the history of education and homeschooling. According to the book, in 1642, the Massachusetts Bay Colony passed a law that required parents to make sure their children could read. Just five years later, they passed another law that required towns with 50 families or households to establish the first elementary schools. And then towns with at least 100 households were required to establish grammar schools, which basically were um, schools that focused on the classics and Latin. Then by the mid 1600s, more and more schools began to prop up in other New England towns. Many were what we would think of as plain one-room one room schoolhouses. 
So here's the timeline of kind of what we're talking about between the movie we just, the clip of the movie we just watched and um, our chapter one of our book. So in the pre, before the 1600 time period, most children were educated at home. They learned from their parents from the time that they were, you know, babies on up. Um, and, and learning occurred naturally and organically in your home. And then when we hit the mid 1600s, we see the elementary schools and the grammar schools and the one room schoolhouses begin to prop up in those colonial times. Um, around the 17 to the 1900s, what was called common schools in the video clip and the industrial age started. And then we saw, we see almost every state requiring school. It was mandated. And that military type, type um, look to what the school was doing, like forced and extreme, robotic. And then around the 1970s, we see rebirth of home education. Parents starting to say, hey, I don't like what I see happening in in the, in the school system. I don't want to send my child to the school system. And so a few and more and more parents started deciding they wanted to homeschool. And then in the 90s, charter schools began to um, come around and charter school law was created in 1991-92. And parent choice and personalized learning began to um, become larger and more common. Until Today, unbelievingly, unbelievably, we have almost 2 million homeschooled students in America, which is so exciting. It's 3.4%, which sounds like a small amount, but it's really a large amount when you look at the total population. We talked last month about the reasons why you might choose to homeschool, and those included those ones that you see on this slide, family togetherness learning challenges, bullying at school, family goals, because you were homeschooled, teaching self-directed learning, starting college early, time for apprenticeship and jobs. Maybe your child is bored in school or they have an illness or physical challenge. Those are all reasons we see today why people choose to homeschool. And Interestingly, the U.S. Department of Education surveyed homeschooling families and found the following reasons for homeschooling, which is really interesting to me. So when they did their study, they found that 36% of homeschooling families chose to homeschool because of religion or morality, which is about a third. Then there's around 7% because they wanted that non-traditional approach, like what we would call unschooling. 4% because of special needs. 15% other reasons they didn't um, specify. 21% because of the school environment. So that's when you're looking at the bullying or um, the child isn't keeping up with the homework or whatever the reason is for the school environment. And then 17% because of instruction quality. They wanna have something better for their child. So what about you? What's best for your child? Don't parents know what's best? Let's see what this video has to say. Whether it's budget shortages, whether it's teachers needing to be laid off, whether it's school violence, here is the news about public schools, and, and it's not good news. I'm a credential teacher, so when I asked myself would I want my children in my classroom, and the answer was no, my world fell apart. School is about preparing kids for the real world, but then we don't let them get involved in the real world for the whole time that they're in these institutions. A lot more parents are saying, boy, this isn't working. We've got to do something different. I think what we need to do is provide lots of learning opportunities for our kids and help them discover what they're really good at. That's what I really think is the promise of homeschooling. 
attitude towards your children, towards how you want to support them in their learning. People who want to homeschool really want to and probably figure out a way to do it. If you open up your mind a little bit, you can create a customized situation that fits any family. I really didn't see learning as something that was separate from just life. Homeschooling isn't about developing a product. It's about the journey. Okay, so that's really exciting. You know, we have choices now. History has come full circle back to parents being able to take charge of their child's education if they choose to. Studies show that parents really are their child's best teacher. Why? There are so many reasons, but here's a few. Parents are the best teachers. They learn through hands-on activities and projects while they're at home. Parents know how to take advantage of learning opportunities because they know their child. They can learn together as a family, discuss topics all day long, seek answers together, especially with technology. They can design a curriculum best suited to each child, interact one-on-one -on -one with their children, pinpoint a child's weakness and work on it, exhibit patience and good humor, and share love and close bonds with each child. Homeschooling is a lifestyle. Before we read this slide though, I want you to type in the chat because I wanted this to be as interactive as possible. Um, or tell your neighbor if you're in a group why you think parents are one of the best teachers in your child's life or in a child's life. Okay, Karen says we know them best. Yes, absolutely. Parents are the most invested in their child's development and learning. Yes, definitely. We care more than anyone else. Yes. Now there's a lot of teachers on, on this Zoom. I'm a teacher as well and I love when I had a class, I loved all of my students, but now that I'm a parent, that's before I was a parent, now that I'm a parent, there's nothing bigger or stronger or greater than the love I have for my own children. It's just different. Um, they know what passions they have and how to build on them. Absolutely, yeah. It, we, if you're a homeschooling parent, you're spending so much more valuable time with your children that you see those little, opportunities to um, notice a passion that they might not even know they have yet. Parents can tailor their children's, children's education according to their child's weaknesses and strengths. Absolutely. We're the first cheerleaders for them. Yep, that's for sure. We can teach to each child's specific need and don't have to use one size fits all curriculum. Yes. That's absolutely true. In fact, I see that with my own seven children because when I first started, I thought, oh, I'll use this box curriculum for all seven of them. And I soon learned that that wasn't gonna work. You, know, it, you get that opportunity to experience multiple different types of curriculum or education choices when you have more than one child or, or children that you're teaching for sure. Um, so back to this slide, the homeschool lifestyle. Homeschooling is not school at home. Uh, many times you, when I first started, I tried to create school at home and it worked for a little while. My oldest daughter was not going to have much of it though. She was very creative. She wanted to be outdoors playing and sitting down with four hours of school books at five years old was not going to work. Um, so we soon learned that learning happens all day long, 24 seven, everything we were doing, taking advantage of learning opportunities as a family um, and watching that child for those learn learning opportunities. It's about connecting with your child, like some of, them, uh, some of you said in the chat and noticing teachable moments. No two homeschooling families are gonna look the same and each have individual and unique characteristics, but all learning is valuable. Um, 
why don't you type in the chat what your favorite thing or activity to do together as a family is? Read aloud. I love reading aloud. Right now we're reading um, Little House on the Prairie series. Again, we've done it before years ago and now we're doing it again. And it's so much fun. So much to learn. Science and art projects. All right, Lily, I love it. I'm going to come to your house for science projects. <laughs> Board games. Yes, they're so much fun. We love playing, um, what is it called? Life. Yes. We enjoy hiking, art, and reading, fun, nature journals, nature and travel, traveling. I love educational travel. That's my favorite. I love learning history through traveling too. Cooking, yes, very fun. All the fun things that you can do every day with your kids, learning together. So this slide just goes over some of the different things you can do for learning opportunities. Learn, they mirror my excitement when learning something new. We all discussed a pig together for the first time. That's awesome. And field trips, yes. Inspire offers so many wonderful field trips that are educational. So some of the things that you can do to learn together, choosing something new to learn about each day, looking for those things to learn, new things, and then just grabbing your phone or iPad and, and researching it more. My son loves lizards, so he'll bring, you know, today we had um, a gopher in the yard. And it bit my dog's nose. And so he was worried that gopher might have rabies. And so then we went off and started researching rabies. There's so many different learning opportunities like that. Um, using artwork or music to complement learning activities. Engage in lively conversations and discussions. Those are great for the dinner table. Sometimes we go around the dinner table and say, what was your high and what was your low today? And that will bring up a new discussion and new conversation. Play a variety of strategy games or what if games throughout the day. Provide creative, stimulating, and hands on activities like those art and science activities. Encourage experimentation, exploration, and problem solving. Develop a schedule or routine that works for you. You, you follow this or you rule the schedule. Don't let the schedule rule you. That's what I always say. Um, and explore and read something new every day. So many wonderful things that you can learn um, through, through just homeschooling your kids. So many things I've learned, much more than I ever learned or remembered in school. Um, here are some of the other benefits of homeschooling. And this was some of the statistical data that I took out of that book, the Everything Guidebook. Um, the statistical data shows that uh, Homeschooled students score at or above average compared to their traditionally schooled peers. And that is um, on SAT. That was specifically looking at the SAT scores overall. And that study was done in the late 2000s, if I'm um, remembering correctly. Um, and then also homeschool students perform better in college. Studies show that children who are homeschooled are more mature in their social interactions. They have more experience communicating with multi-age groups because they have more opportunities for interaction. They oftentimes will be around older adults or younger children and be able to carry on uh, conversations or learn to just converse with multiple ages of people. And finally, homeschooling is less stressful on the child and the family overall. Homeschooling families don't have to deal with the morning rush out the door, um, after school homework, deadlines from tests or quizzes. Instead, they have more time to, com um, to complete their tasks at the child's pace or developmental level. They can personalize the learning, take control of their schedule, decide what to say yes to and what to say no to, which is very hard sometimes even as a homeschooling family. And um, all of that produces a more calm and less stressed environment, which studies also show there is a lower um, percentage of students with you know, disabilities and things like that that are um, brought on from that stress in the school environment. So lots and lots of pluses and benefits from homeschooling. 
Okay, so one last video. Again, this is from the class dismissed. I think it's an hour and a half documentary, just little clips here and there. And this one is showing really just what um, more, more focusing in on a particular student and the struggle she was having personally. Let's go ahead and watch that. I've always really liked to learn, but school brought on a lot of stress and I just felt like I was kind of failing as a student. She was so excited to learn when she was little, and I've been to seeing it plummet. Our kids just come on grumpy, overworked, and craziest amount of busy. School's like something that I always dread going to because you're going to be stuck in a classroom sitting there for hours and hours. There was no time to clean their room. I couldn't ask them to help me unload the dishwasher or vacuum a room. They were too busy. They literally were always doing schoolwork. My world revolved around school, and that was all that there was. It really made me start to think and question what we were doing and made me wonder about what other alternatives there were. I don't think we buy into this anymore. Finally, I hit my breaking point. I was like, I don't want to go to school anymore. Many parents do not realize that they have options, and they don't even feel like they have a right to have much of a say in their children's education. The very first thing you need to do is outside the box of the school, outside the conventional notions of what learning is. Times are changing, schools are not. And parents wanna know, well, what can I give my child if the salvation of school is really just an empty promise? You know, what is it? And then they realize, me, my family, my community. The idea that kids are this entire human being and are interacting with the world, not just a teacher in a classroom, is still new to so many adults. The best way to have an impact in the direction of the education revolution is to go outside the system. Okay, so I want to say again, I strongly encourage you to watch that documentary if you get your hands on it. It's really powerful and also encouraging to what you all are doing on this homeschooling journey. Um, so a part of what I wanted to do tonight was just to give you that little glimpse into the history of education and homeschooling, but also to kind of dive deep into your own history. We all have our own history of education. I was, um, brought up in like a more traditional education system all the way through college. And now I'm choosing to homeschool. So my past history looks totally different than my children's history is gonna look. And so I just wanna encourage you to um, do this activity. And if you're at home, do it at home. Or if you're in your group, do it in your group. Um, we're not gonna get to it right this second, but I'm gonna kind of go through the directions. And so as soon as we're done here, you can go ahead and start the activity. If you're watching with your group, go ahead and wait for the directions from your host. And if you are watching at home alone, you'll wanna take out a piece of paper because we're gonna go ahead and create an education history timeline. And the first step is deciding what date you wanna start at. Do you wanna start at your own birth your or your parents' date of birth or your grandparents or even further back? It's up to you. And I really wanna encourage you to have this be a family project. I want you to get started now, but pull your family into it, pull your kids into it so they can kind of learn a little bit about your family tree as well as you go back. I know for when my grandpa only finished through eighth grade, for example. So I want to talk to my kids about that. And what would that mean for them if they stopped school in eighth grade? You know, how much would they know? Would that be enough? Maybe it would, maybe it wouldn't. But to have that discussion, 
discussion would be really powerful. And this is a great thing to just do maybe at the family dinner table after you've had dinner or just something like that. There's so many different ways that you can create this timeline and I have some examples on this next slide. So this top one, um, is the yellow one is more of a uh, like kind of a handmade um, type type timeline that goes horizontally and um, and so your kids could get involved again with this and you know maybe you draw pictures or write little you know a little note and you could glue it onto the paper um, the one on the right is more simple if you want to just list out more like on a line piece of paper if that's your style a timeline what um, what you did in you know this one kindergarten first grade second grade and what you did however you want to do it and then that other one down on the lower left is a little bit more detailed a little bit more structured so whatever your style you can google different timelines to get an idea but just make this really fun for you and your family and a project where you guys can get together and and create this timeline of education for your family um, the other thing I wanted to share with you too, since we're kind of heading into the holidays and next month is Thanksgiving, something that I'm starting this year, brand new for our family, is a day of remembrance on Thanksgiving day. And I thought this kind of tied really nicely into the timeline idea. And um, so what we're gonna do is go around the circle at the dinner table and talk, choose one person who's passed in our family. I'm gonna choose my grandma. And, um, and just talk about a memory or two about them and why I was grateful to have her in my life. And, and then I'm gonna tie it in with this timeline activity and, ta and talk a little bit about how she was educated and how my grandpa only you know, went through the eighth grade and that type of thing. So um, I just wanted to little plant that little seed if any of you wanna do something like that with your family as well. I think um, in our American culture especially, we don't do enough to remember those who have passed on before us. And, um, and I know my grandma was very, very special in my life and I want my kids to know who she was as well. Um, so have fun with this. Please share any pictures of your timelines on the Facebook group so we can all have the pleasure of seeing those as well. Um, and we have a few minutes left. If any of you have any questions, you can put them in the chat and we can go ahead and have a Q&A time too for a few minutes. Any questions? While you guys are typing any questions, then I'm gonna go ahead and go over some reminders. This webinar will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. The channel is called The Heart of Homeschooling, so you can go to YouTube and search it there. It's also linked on our website. So if you can't find it, you can go to the website and click on the link. Um, there's another live webinar Thursday, this Thursday at 10 a.m. It'll be the exact same slides, possibly a little bit different stories, but same information. Next month's webinar will be on November 19th, and we'll be discussing teaching styles and learning styles. Um, please join our Facebook group if you are on Facebook and not on our group yet. It is called Heart of Homeschooling. Lots of interaction and comments and questions on the group. And then you can go to our website for more resources called Heart of Homeschooling as well. And email me if you have any questions. I do not see any questions in the chat. So I think we're going to go ahead and say good night. It's 7.38, so I hope everyone has a wonderful evening. And if you're meeting in one of our community groups, please go ahead and follow directions from your hosts. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Have a wonderful night. You're welcome.